Today we have the new M1 iPad Air. I'm so excited to check this out. Not only does it have the new M1 chip, but it also has 5G. So let's start unboxing and check it out. Since we're in the kitchen, we use a kitchen knife. And today we're actually shooting this video at 8K, so I thought we would switch up the set a little. Just do a nice little unboxing in the kitchen. Why not? So this is actually the new blue color of the iPad. Can't wait to see it. So this is the iPad Air, fifth gen. This is the Wi-Fi Plus cellular. It is always so nice having this always connected. <gasps> this blue is so pretty. This actually looks way better in person than it did online. Like I thought the blue looked great, but like, take a look at this. This is a great color. So into it. Got our paperwork. Oh boy. Okay, fingers crossed that the Apple sticker is blue. Okay, it's not, but that's okay. I'm not upset about it. So we've got our USB-C cable and our power brick. The new iPad Air is also compatible with the Magic Keyboard and I love this thing so much. If you've watched any of my iPad reviews, you guys know that I am the biggest fan of the Magic Keyboard. One, because it kind of turns this iPad into more of a computer laptop type device. It has the trackpad. It also adds in an additional little USB-C port here that allows for pass-through charging. And this is amazing because that will also give you access to the USB-C port on the iPad. So that basically gives you a charging port and a data port, which is incredible if you're actually using this to do anything where you need to charge and be able to transfer data. I also like that they came out with a white version of it too, so they do have two colors, the black and the white. Look at you, look at you, look at you. So here you'll see the trackpad, your keyboard, and this is the smart connector that allows basically the case to connect to your iPad. And it also allows, like I said, for the pass through charging. And of course we have the Apple Pencil. I'm not gonna lie, I have spent the last three months drawing a, uh, a project. If you've been following me on Twitter, you probably have a really good guess of what it is. The Apple Pencil on my iPad has pretty much been attached to my body for the past several months. All that to say, <laughs> this is compatible with the Apple Pencil too. Also, the Apple Pencil is an incredible hair tie device. You saw my TikTok, you know. Of course, the iPad and Apple Pencil just docks right here up at the top, which not only charges it, but connects it as well. And one last piece to our new iPad Air puzzle is this is the Smart Folio. Now, this doesn't have a keyboard attached. This is less expensive, and it basically will just keep your iPad safe, and you can also do a few different configurations here for different ways to view your content. This blue is so perfect. This is like a perfect shade. Like I love the complements of this light blue with the dark blue. And that's one thing that Apple really does such a great job of is making sure that all of their accessories have really great complementing colors. So let's put this onto the smart folio so you guys can see what that looks like. And this is so much lighter than the Magic Keyboard. Like that is one thing is this does add a little extra weight. It's time to set up. This is always the most exciting part. This is one of my favorite features about the iPad Air is the fact that they have Touch ID on the power button. And it's added. So this already has a cellular 5G for Verizon in it. Ooh, light mode or dark mode? I think I'm gonna go with light mode. And that's it. It's all set up now. I guess I gotta install some apps and get ready to test. Dude, it's going good. How's, how's everything over there? I'm in Hawaii. I'm so jealous. It's my favorite place. So I'm testing out center stage. Check this out. Watch, I can go all the way over here. My iPhone. <laughs> but this is so cool. The quality on my end looks great. Dude, you actually look incredible too. Like you've got the bokeh behind you too, which is awesome. We got the blurry because I'm using the new iPhone, you know, so. Doing a little cooking. Okay, I'm going over here. Going over here. That's great. I am shocked how well that works. I'm 
actually kind of impressed with your audio too. Like it sounds great. Can you see me all the way over here? Yes, it's, it's tracking you. Have fun in Hawaii. Bye. 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 So it's coffee time and I of course brought the iPad Air and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna film a little vlog of getting the coffee, ordering the coffee, whatever, on my iPhone. What's great about shooting on the iPhone is I can either take all of this footage, airdrop it to the iPad, or what's even better is it syncs to the cloud and it's automatically on the iPad ready to edit in LumaFusion. I guess I'm just gonna make my little vlog now. Hello Justine here, really important message. I'm going to the coffee bean and tea leaf and I'm going to get a pomegranate blueberry tea latte. Also brought one of my OWC drives, which is great because I can just plug in and connect this to our USB-C port. Now everything was airdropped from my phone to the iPad. So I plugged in my drive because I have some music and some clips. So if this was like a bigger edit and I wanted to bring some external footage that I had shot elsewhere, I have all of that on here. It's really loud here though. This is not ideal working conditions for me. <laughs> Noise canceling AirPods Pro Max? Yes, please. I'm gonna find some music on my drive and add this to the mix. Edit is complete and I am so in love with editing on the iPad. Like I forget how incredible it is until you actually sit down and learn the program. It's so awesome having a touch-based environment. Sometimes you just want to reach out and just scroll on that timeline. But yeah, here's the, the final edit. It's my best work. Cheers. somebody's cool or not is if they have uh, enough guts to go out in public and <laughs> take photos of their iPad. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look how cool. Look how cool I look. I mean, even though you might look silly, taking pictures with such a massive device, like the camera is pretty incredible. So more power to you. Let's normalize taking photos and videos on the iPad. Yeah, gotta get the shot. AI Justine here. This is my new body, my new form. I hope you're into it. Now drop it. <laughs> I love it. So there are a lot of iPads in front of me, but this is the one that we're talking about today. This is the iPad Air. It's the fifth generation, which is bringing the M1 chip, 5G connectivity. It has an improved ultra wide front camera featuring center stage, an eight core CPU, eight core graphics with next gen neural engine and eight gigs of RAM. You can get up to 10 hours of battery life on Wi-Fi or nine hours on cellular. You can also now record up to 60 frames a second in 1080p on the front camera and take 12 megapixel photos, which is up from seven on the previous iPad iPad Air. You can also now shoot with extended dynamic range in both the front and the rear camera. I think a lot of people are going to be kind of confused now with the introduction of another iPad that has an M1 chip. So back here, this is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with M1. This is the 11 inch iPad Pro M1. And this is the new 10.9 inch iPad Air with M1 chip. So looking at the smaller iPad Pro in comparison to the new M1 iPad Air, one of the biggest differences is that the Pro iPad has ProMotion display and this gives you an extra fluid feel when you're actually using it. Now this doesn't make that much of a difference on the usability but it is really hard to go back to a non promotion display after using one with it for so long. You can get a pro iPad with storage up to two terabytes where the iPad Air you're maxed out at 256 gigs. Now you do have upgraded cameras with the pro with a 12 megapixel wide 10 megapixel ultra wide plus lidar. Now the Air only has the 12 megapixel wide camera and 
and there's no LiDAR. You will get faster transfer speeds with the USB and Thunderbolt 4 ports in the Pro, and they also do have millimeter wave support, so that will allow you to have faster 5G. There are two speakers in the Air, and there's four in the Pro, and the Pro has Face ID, but it doesn't have Touch ID like the Air does in the power button. I am so excited. I just updated my iPad and the new macOS Monterey so we can test out universal control. Now with this, I can use a mouse and a keyboard and I can control not only my iPad, but I can also control my MacBook, which these two displays are hooked up to. And you can also have one other device as well. So you can have three different Mac products and I'll control them with one mouse, one keyboard. And the cool thing about this is being able to drag and drop files from your iPad to your MacBook and then maybe from the MacBook to another iMac that you have set up. It kind of gives you this whole little universe all in one, hence universal control. Okay, anyway, let's, let's try it. I'm so excited. To get this all started, you go into the display setting and in here you'll see there's a new universal control option. So let's click it. <gasps> Your cursor and keyboard can be used on any nearby Mac or iPad signed into your iCloud. I've got a lot of computers um, around, so I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, look at this, link keyboard and mouse. Oh, it just popped up. Look, it's right here. And what's cool is I love being able to like move this around so you can kind of mimic the desktop setup that you have. <gasps> oh my goodness, look at this. This is my mouse. Do you see? I'm controlling this. This is game changing. This is absolutely, the game has been changed. The game that you knew before is no more. So this is kind of a project that I already started. It was a little animation. So it kind of like goes like this, look at that. And then we have some key presses here. So I drew all of this in Procreate, all of the various key presses. I just exported all of these as separate files. All right, I'm gonna see what's gonna happen when I drag all of these files over. <gasps> They're sliding off of the iPad onto the MacBook, and now I'm just gonna drag and, oh my God, they're right there. So this makes it super easy to go through, and then I made my little animation with each key press. So that was sort of my first impressions and first demo testing out Universal Control. I'm so excited to test this out further. I definitely wanna try it using three different devices. So for now, that's how I plan on using my iPad with Universal Control and with my MacBook, because this is kind of like my main setup, and this is how I've been working for the past couple of months since I got the new MacBook Pro. So now I'm gonna throw it to my friend Jake, who's been helping me shoot some photos and videos, and he actually uses his iPad Pro as his main photo editing device. So I was like, hey, why don't you test out the iPad Air, show us your workflow, and see what you think. Jake, take it away. Yeah, and then you take it away. Okay. Yep, love it. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's going on everybody? Jake here, and as Justine just mentioned, I'm a photographer full time, and I have implemented my iPad Pro into my workflow. And when she gave me a call about giving this iPad Air a try, I kind of geeked out. So I'm gonna give you guys a little insight on my workflow. Now, something that I love that Apple started doing back in 2018 with their 11 inch iPad Pro is implementing the USB-C port on the side. That means that I can plug in an external hard drive, or better yet, for my workflow, I can put my SD card reader or card reader in general straight into the iPad Pad, throw it into Lightroom and start editing. Now I do have to keep in mind that if I'm importing a lot of images that I am kind of stuck with how much storage the iPad has on board. Now I absolutely love the Apple Pencil, especially when it comes to Lightroom Mobile. The first thing that I like to do is go in and change the color profile to match my camera. Now that I've got that done, I'm gonna mess with some of the colors and some of the exposures until I find something that I really like. Okay, so I've definitely got my exposure in a comfortable place. I'm gonna jump straight into the masking and fine tune some details. And I see over here that it's got some of her in that mask and I don't want that. So I'm gonna subtract from that mask. Use the brush tool to brush anything that is highlighted in red away. Now that I've got the subject masked out of this photo, I can make any adjustments to just that specific part of the photo. I absolutely love just how fast the iPad is able to compute this. One of the last places that I like to edit is in the effects tab. So let's go ahead and open that up, pull down a little bit of the clarity and then pop a little bit of dehaze on there and add a little bit of vignette so it isolates that iPad even more. So I'm gonna crop this down to 16 by nine so I make sure that everything would fit perfectly into a 16 by nine thumbnail for YouTube. Overall, I am very impressed by this iPad. Comparing it to my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I really noticed no difference. I mean, the display is nice and bright, everything's nice and fast and I was able to get the job done just as easily as I would have on my iPad Pro. And the fact that this is about half the cost of that definitely means that there's gonna be a lot of people giving me a run for my money out there. Let's see it. What do we think? Oh, 
dude, I think that actually, that might be the thumbnail. Oh, really? Here's a little bit before and after for you. Before. Oh. After. Th yeah, that's a huge difference. You like it? I love it. Sweet. Cost-wise, for Wi-Fi, you're looking at a starting price of $599 for 64 gigs in the air. And the base pro model starts at 128 gigs for $799. I think it really comes down to price. How much internal storage do you think you're gonna need? Will you need faster transfer speeds with a Thunderbolt 4 on the Pro? But I really think for most people, you're gonna be pretty happy with the new iPad Air because it can do just about everything that you'd need. For all of my illustration stuff, I've been using the iPad Pro, and it's kind of interesting because when you're using Procreate, the amount of layers that you you're able to create depends on the amount of RAM that your device has. So the 128, the 256, and the 512 gig iPad models only have eight gigs of RAM. But if you choose the one terabyte or two terabyte options, that then gives you a completely specced up iPad giving you 12 gigs of RAM. All that being said, price is a huge factor. So the fact that you can do basically everything that these M1 Pro iPads can do here on the iPad Air, yes, there are some limitations, but I feel like that is something that you easily can work around if you need it. So I'm very excited about this introduction of this new iPad into the family. I look forward to continuing to test that out and I am so looking forward to seeing what you guys think of these devices. I'm a huge iPad fan and I am so excited to kind of see them out in the wild and see what you guys create. And if you're not creating, that's fine. Consume content. We're also consumers. It's also pretty great for playing video games. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to check out my new little project that I've been working on, feel free to follow along twitter.com slash jpig and also on Instagram, jpig.farm. And if you want to also sign up in the mailing list so you'll be alerted when the alpha is going to be dropped, you guys can sign up on the website, jpig.farm. I love the iPad. It has honestly changed my life over the past couple of months just using it in a way that I never thought that I would ever use an iPad. I never really thought that illustration was something that I would get back into. So I've been having the best time and I hope that you guys can find something that inspires you to kind of unlock something that you never thought that you would do again, like whether it's playing a sport or drawing or maybe you want to start making videos. And that must be the sign that I have to plug in my iPad and it's time to go. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Perfect timing, little iPad.